Hey guys, I thought I'd show you another project I've been working on. This is an, well, it's going to be an air muscle. Um, this is a really convenient way to convert pneumatic power into linear motion. Uh, the, the benefit is that an air muscle is pretty strong. It produces a high force, uh, but the travel is not very high. So depending on your application, maybe you can come up with a gearing solution or some sort of a lever mechanism that will uh, give you the, uh, an appropriate travel. So let's get into this thing. It's actually very simple to build one of these. I found a really good page on instructables.com and I'll put the link in the uh, description here. And I didn't order the exact equipment that was specified in the instructables video or a uh, tutorial, but I will put links to all the stuff that I bought too. So we'll start with the core of the muscle. This is silicone tubing. It's very stretchy. Um, it's not really, this tubing is not designed to carry high pressure because it would inflate like a balloon. It's very, very soft. It doesn't handle high pressures. And the size is a quarter inch on the inside and three eighths on the outside. So a sixteenth inch wall. And it's pretty cheap. I think I got ten feet for ten bucks or something like that. And the second main component is this um, woven loom, and this would be used to help organize electronic cabling. You can put a bundle of wires in there and it keeps all the wires together. And it's just woven uh, nylon, I think. Or no, actually uh, polyester, actually, I think. Uh, I'll put that in the description, too. So first I'm just going to show you how stretchy this stuff is. I'm going to make a plug out of uh, a quarter inch nylon bolt and um, I'm just going to cut the threads off and then just plug up one end of the tubing. And to make a seal, I'm going to use a zip tie. Here's a good tip. Always use a zip tie gun. Uh, these things really work well and they have a, this particular one has a sensitivity or a tension adjustment. So if I set the tension at about two out of Four, um, it makes it quite tight and it won't come out of there. So I'll cut off a length of this, maybe about that much, and just inflate this to show you what it looks like. So as you can see, even with just 20 or 30 PSI in there, it actually inflates just like a balloon, and uh, <laughs> that wouldn't actually work, be very useful to us all by itself. So, what we can add to this to make it into a functional air muscle is this loom. So I'll cut the wire tie off just to make it easier to insert in here, and Actually, what, I'll, what I found to, that works best actually is to um, melt the ends just a little bit with a torch. So that's just, that's just to keep it from totally coming apart uh, when putting together this thing. So that just you know, helps keep the end while inserting the tube. So I'll put in the silicone tubing. And I find that it works best to extend past the tube a little bit like this and pull everything taut. And then on the other end, I can see through the loom and I'll cut off a little bit extra so that the loom fully covers the tube up. And then we'll come back in with the wire tie. On that end. And since we're just kind of testing this thing out, I'm not going to bother putting um, a, a decent end on the other side. I'm just going to kind of loosely put the wire tie on and then um, the end of this air nozzle is tapered so that it, when I put the taper in there and then push the wire tie down, it'll oops, <laughs> try that again. I'll just use another one. The idea is that when I cinch this thing down, the wire tie will actually make a pretty good air seal there. All right, so let's give this thing a shot. So there you have it. Not a whole lot of uh, linear motion. Let's check out what we've got. 
the active area of this thing is about three and a half inches between the wire ties. And when if I, if I pulled on this, you actually get maybe another eighth inch or quarter inch of travel. But we'll just we'll measure it from its resting position. So I'll line up that far wire tie with the three and a half inch mark. And when I inflate, we get about a little over a half inch of travel, maybe about five eighths of an inch actually. So that's pretty good. It's quite strong. Like I'm saying, the, the most useful way to use this is to um, connect it to a lever system or a some sort of a mechanical advantage system so that you can get a little bit more travel out if you need it. So the next task, if, to, if we were going to build this into a real project, would be to um, come up with an end that allows this to be connected to something and also have air pass into it. And that's what I'm going to show you now, what I actually built this into. So this is the beginnings of a force feedback joystick. So in the resting state, um, it's pretty easy to move this handle around, and later on I'll add a larger handle to it. Um, it, it definitely wants to go back to center, but the amount of force it takes to move it is not that high. It's maybe, I don't know, a pound or two of force to move the joystick completely. And you can see how this is built. We've got four air muscles and a, a swiveling connector here. There's a Delrin ball on the other, on the uh, joystick internal part there, which allows the plate to move around and, and pull the joystick in the right in four different directions. So I'll show you how it works. I'll just pick on this air muscle and put a little bit of, now this, this tubing can actually handle uh, about 70 PSI. So this will be good enough to transport the air to the device without inflating like that silicone tubing. Um, and what I did was I used uh, a uh, barbed pipe fitting and threaded that into the edge of the joystick and then put another barbed pipe fitting in the first one so that <laughs> I have an airtight connection going into the air muscle and simultaneously made mechanical connection with the edge of the joystick housing. So we'll put some air pressure on this. And you can see the air muscle flexing there. So let's look at what's happening on the top side. And there's the force feedback uh, in one direction there. And of course, you can combine directions, even running two at once. I don't have the air manifold set up yet. But of course, you could have it do all kinds of things like that. And to control it a little bit better, I came up with this air manifold. I might do another video showing this whole project when it's done. This is uh, two main components. The first component, this part is a, um, a voltage to pressure transducer. So if you give this thing a voltage, this particular one takes zero to 10 volts. It will output a pressure, uh, in this case, 3 to 120 PSI. So very useful. It's, it doesn't even require a power supply. You just give it the raw voltage and it takes care of the rest. And um, the output of this transducer is connected to four valves, one for each of the directions that you saw on the joystick. So with this, you'll be able to switch on and off the air muscles. You only have one pressure to choose for the whole system, but you could turn on one or two air muscles to either make a cardinal direction or a diagonal. So I think that's about it. Uh, I would definitely experiment more with these air muscles. They're very inexpensive to experiment with since you just need the loom and the silicone tubing.
And uh, you can make longer ones to increase the linear travel or use a, a mechanical advantage system. So have fun with that and let me know what you build.